Today I'm showing you how to make a quick and easy frittata with vibrant spring vegetables. It's not only healthy and delicious and a great way to use up in-season farmer's market fresh vegetables, but it's also quite the stunner. I'm a big fan of frittata recipes as they're really quite versatile and you can serve them up for breakfast, brunch, lunch, or even dinner. They're perfect for holidays and serving a crowd, or you can keep the leftovers all to yourself, which is what I did with this one, and then enjoy it throughout the week. So let me show you how to make it. To get started, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This recipe is really easy. There's just two vegetables to chop today, and the first is a half a pound of asparagus. I prefer the thin asparagus as they cook quickly and are bite-sized, but if you can only find thick asparagus, that's fine too. Just slice them in half lengthwise before chopping them up. So remove the woody stems from the asparagus and then cut the asparagus into half inch long pieces. With a half a pound bunch like this, I usually just divide it into two portions before chopping. And once that's done, place those pieces in a bowl. Next up is one leek and try to grab one with as much white and light green on it as possible because that's the usable portion. So remove the dark green leaves, which can be a bit tough trim off the base, and then cut it in half. Leeks have all of these lovely layers inside, similar to an onion or shallot, and that's because they're part of the same allium family. And leeks have a mild, slightly sweet oniony flavor. But because of how they're grown in sandy, loose soil, they're notorious for having dirt within their layers. So they do need a good wash, and I'll get to that here in a second. Slice the halves lengthwise into quarters, and then slice across. This one doesn't have any obvious dirt, but you should have seen the one I sliced yesterday. It was loaded with dirt. So once it's sliced up, place it in a colander and give it a good rinse under the faucet, making sure all those layers get separated and washed, and then set it aside. And that's it for chopping vegetables. See, super easy. All right, now it's onto the eggs and you'll crack 10 large eggs into a large bowl. But you wanna hear something funny. As I was cracking all of these eggs, I realized that I tapped the eggs three times on the counter before cracking them open. And I'm talking every single time, three taps, which I thought was funny. So now I'm curious, how many taps does everyone else do? To the eggs, you'll add a half a cup of yogurt, and you can use dairy-free yogurt as well, and then season to your liking with salt and pepper. A classic frittata has just a little bit of yogurt or cream, not as much as what you'd find in a quiche, but it does help to give it that really smooth and creamy texture. So whisk that up until it's smooth and slightly frothy, and then set it aside. Place a 10-inch oven-safe pan on medium heat and add a couple tablespoons of olive oil or avocado oil. Add the leek and saute it for about three to four minutes or until it's started to soften. Add the chopped asparagus and saute this for another one to two minutes. I like my asparagus to have a slightly crisp texture, but if you like your asparagus a bit softer, just saute it a little bit longer or to your personal preference. And if you ever feel like you need just a smidge more oil in the pan, go ahead and add that. Next, add one cup of frozen peas and one packed cup of baby spinach. Stir that together for another one to two minutes or until the spinach is wilted and the peas are no longer frozen. And just be a little careful stirring until the spinach does wilt or you might lose a leaf or two over the side of the pan, which I often do. Season the filling with salt and pepper and give it one last stir just to make sure that it's all combined. Now at this point, you can pour the egg mixture right over the top of the filling. That's 100% perfectly fine but I'm gonna show you a little trick that I do just to make the frittata extra gorgeous on top and very Instagrammable. And that's that I remove about a quarter to a third of the filling to a small bowl and then add it back in after the eggs have firmed up a bit. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. So pour your egg mixture on top and let it cook on the stove undisturbed for two to three minutes. The eggs will begin to set, especially around the edges and on the bottom, and that helps to ensure that the filling we removed stays closer to the top and doesn't fall to the bottom. And that makes for a prettier, more photogenic frittata. I'm just using my fingers today to place some of that filling back on top, but I'm also sort of burning my fingers, so it's probably smarter to use a spoon to do this. 
And once that's done, you can dollop some soft goat cheese on top. I'm using about three ounces of goat cheese here, and then we'll sprinkle a little bit more on at the end. But if you're not a fan of goat cheese, you could use your favorite cheese or leave the cheese off entirely. It's up to you. Once that's done, carefully transfer the frittata to your oven and cook it for 15 to 20 minutes. You wanna cook it so that the top is just set and firm. And I cooked mine actually closer to 20 minutes today, but just keep an eye on yours. When the frittata is done, you might notice it puffed up a bit. That's totally normal and it will fall back down flat as it cools. And this is what it looks like straight out of the oven. But to zhuzh it up a bit, I like to add fresh herbs like parsley and dill. It just adds to that fresh spring vibe we're going for and of course adds a punch of flavor. And then I'll sprinkle just a little bit more goat cheese on top for added texture. And look at what a beauty this frittata is. You'll get about eight servings out of this frittata, and when you slice into it, you'll see all those beautiful spring vegetables on the inside. It really is loaded with greens, and I can assure you that both kids and adults will love this frittata and likely go back for seconds. I hope you enjoyed today's recipe, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your family and friends, and I will see you again in the next video.